You are employing this thing you call COEM, which stands for cognitive emulation. Is that right? This is our current approach to build such systems. Is it emulating human intelligence more closely? Because in a way, it seems LLMs already seem to do a pretty good job of that. So yeah, so this is exactly correct, is that the plan is to build systems that emulate human cognition in a degree that they also fail in the way humans fail, that we really understand how humans solve problems and that we can reliably get things to actually solve in that way. LLMs, while very good at acting as humans, do not solve problems the way humans solve problems. When you look at an LLM, it's tempting to think of it as writing. Like, I asked the math question. And it's very tempting to think of this as it writing out a math answer like a human would. This is not what's happening. Humans, when they write, they, you know, they pause, they think, you know, they go back, they, you know, strike something through and add another thing or whatever. It's a very interactive process. Mm -hmm. This is not how LLMs work. I remember seeing a tweet which described LLMs as freestyle wrapping their answers, which is mm -hmm. much more accurate, mm -hmm. is that LLMs are more like a human who can output a whole mathematical reasoning thing in one go without stopping for breath. This is very different from how humans do this kind of reasoning. And if we continue to make these things bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger, we're going to get systems that are better and better at freestyle wrapping intelligent, complicated things. The way they reach those answers and the way they reason about these things are not how humans reason about these things. And they fail in very different ways. Everyone has seen like these AIs just like go off the rails and suddenly do crazy things that make no sense from a human perspective. Right. It's much better to think of these systems as aliens wearing a human mask. You know, they speak perfect English, but mm -hmm. they're just pretending. They're just acting, play acting. And I gather in a way that that's, especially pronounced in math, or maybe it becomes more apparent. Like they don't have a calculator module. That's not built into an LLM. You could add one, and I guess that's probably what they're going to do in a lot of cases, just plug in a calculator. But when you get to regular, leave aside math, when you get to regular language processing, like I ask it a question, it gives me an answer. To the extent that I understand this, I'm more and more struck by the way it may be doing things internally kind of the way a human brain does them, right? You know, I gather that you can think of there being kind of a semantic space. So like tennis shoe and basketball shoe and army boot are a lot closer to each other than they are to lamp. And I just saw a thing online where they said you can think of sentences this way too. Sentences as being mapped, which would help me understand the fact that whether you say to a person, what's it like outside now? Or whether you say, what's the weather doing now? You know, that's kind of the same thing. And I gather that those two questions actually are, in some sense, close to each other in semantic space, right? Now, apparently, we, we think that's going on inside these LLMs. I'd imagine something like that's going on inside my brain, right? To what extent do you think these LLMs are almost reverse engineering the basic workings of the human brain based on its kind of linguistic output, if that makes sense? So I do think some of this is happening for sure. In fact, I would even go further than that. I think that uh, both LLMs and humans are approximating something more fundamental, which is like, you know, general cognitive algorithms and cognitive structures that, you know, efficiently represent various structures about reality and various regularities and so on, and also idiosyncrasies of our reality. So I do think some of this is going on, but this is not quite what I mean when I talk about it not being human, because really, I think any reasoning system will look something like this. Like, you know, if an alien from outer space came, which we agree is not human, I expect the alien to have some kind of language. And this language will have some words which are closer to each other and some words which are farther away from each other, even if it's a totally different language on a different alien planet. A better way to think about a language model, if we look at it from a human perspective, is that it is as if we took a human, we ripped out all their sense organs, their eyes, tongue, skin, all of it, no sense organs, except one special purpose tentacle that can perceive one specific token at a time of like special braille characters. We also remove all the emotions from their brain. You know, we rip up all the emotion centers, we rip out the amygdala, we ripped out the cerebellum, we rip out all of that, we just leave this neocortex in. And then we let this, 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 this system uh, read random chunks of the internet text and books at you know super speed for you know ten thousand subjective years until it's like memorized every single book ever written and like you know ten percent of the internet. I expect that whatever comes out of this is not human. 
Like, why would you expect this thing to be human? I think mm -hmm. it would speak perfect English. I, mm -hmm. I expect this the thing, if you translate as Braille into English, that it outputs with a little tentacle, I do expect it to speak perfect English. So you're saying that's a metaphor for the LLMs we have now? Yes. Okay. Yes. LLMs have no vision. They have no sound, no sight, nothing of the like. They don't have emotions. They don't have any of the parts of the brain which aren't learning. They're pure mm -hmm. learning things. And the way they perceive text is as strings of numbers that encode text, like mm -hmm. you know, one token at a time of this, like, you know, well, technically in parallel, but that's an implementation detail. And they're taught not by like reading sequentially like humans do. Instead, we take billions of websites and books and we, we cut them into little pieces of like, mm -hmm. you know, maybe like a few pages each. And then we shuffle all those and then we have it randomly read those for like 10,000 subjective years or something. And what parts of human nature do you want to add in by cognitive emulation? So we've got something with one tentacle. We've taken everything else out <laughs> just about. And you think it's important to add in what parts of human nature or human cognition to make these things safer? Thanks for watching Non-Zero Clips. The clip you just watched is from the overtime segment of a Non-Zero podcast episode. To hear the public portion of that episode and others like it, Subscribe to the Non-Zero YouTube channel or Non-Zero podcast feed. And to gain access to overtime segments and other exclusive content, subscribe to Robert Wright's Non-Zero newsletter on Substack.